Hi, in this video I'll show you how to use Power Query to create a dynamic calendar table. Now, I'm going to go through how you can create a calendar table without Power Query first and then show you why it's kind of advantageous to use Power Query to do it. So let's say for example we have a start date here and I'm going to use start date 1-1-2016 and let's say I want to have an end date of 12-31-2019. That's going to be over 600 rows of data and the easiest way to do this or one of the easiest way I found to do this is do a fill series. Go into fill series my series is in columns so I select that and my end date is 12-31-2019 press enter double click that because we have our hash marks here because we want to see what they look like. The hash marks just show that it doesn't fit within the constraints of the column double click that and we see if I control down arrow we go all the way to 12-31-2019 control up arrow to go back up and we have our column here now if we want to get some other data out of this like we want to look at the year that this is part of press tab select that close parentheses and we have our year double click that to autofill control down arrow we see our years go from 2016 to 2019 control up arrow maybe we want to look at the uh, day or weekday let's see let's see if that brings us anything no maybe the month let's try month month and we do close parentheses press control enter to stay in there that's the first month of the year that's why it's number one January double click that to autofill control down arrow we see that we have December which is the 12th month of 2019 but it shows to, um, 12. Now if we wanted to automate this because we change dates in here it wouldn't be really that easy to automate it here in this table if we had date and then year and then the month number we would have to always go back into it and double click to fill the formula down but if we want to automate it make it a little easier Power Query really comes in handy. Let's show you how it does that. Now I have a table here. Control up arrow. We have our data and our names and maybe this is the date of birth or a date, some kind of event. So let's say we have this table and I want to have my start date and end dates with this table with this column name. And I want this to be dynamic because when I append data later on to it, I want to know what my start dates and my end dates are for this. If I want to do some analysis or I want to do a lookup. What we need to do first is turn this into a table. So I go to insert table or just press the control T. I'll use control T and it's going to Excel smart enough to figure out what my range of data is from A1 to B501 and does know that my table has headers. The first row is the header field. Click OK. It turns my range of data into a table and I'm going to bring it into Power Query. Go to Data from Table and Range and we will get our dates out of this. So as the Power Query editor comes up, I will remove some columns. Oh, actually, the only column I need to remove is this name column. So select that, right click, remove. And this date column what I want to do is look at the first date. And before I do that, this is a date data type. So Excel Power Query was smart enough to change the data type. You can see that the applied steps here, the second step was that it changed the data type. It changed this field to a date and this field to a string. So that's one of the nice things Power Query guessed at. So when I click on the third step here where we're removing columns, I'm going to do a fourth step here where I'm going to look at the earliest date. So I'll click on this, go to transform, and go to date, and I want to get the earliest date here. So I was trying to figure out what the earliest date out of the whole range of data is, and that's going to be 11, 14, uh, 2016. But I forgot one more thing. I didn't need this time here. Let's delete that step, go back in the change type, and what it did was Let's change this from a date time because you see that little time icon there. We want just the date. Click insert 
and we'll just replace that current step because we don't want that date timestamp. We want data type. We want that, that date data type. Click replace current and replace that. So when I click in step three here, we see that we've gone to that step where we remove columns. I will go to this, go to transform, and under date, we want the earliest date out of this column, which is going to be 11-14-2016. Click home and all I need to do is just click and load as a connection. So before I do that, let me call this start. We'll call this start and click close and load. And we want to load this as a connection. By default, I have this loaded as a connection in Power Query. You can see the window come up and we only want to create a connection and click OK. The navigation, the pane will come here. The queries and connection pane will come here and you'll see that it's only a connection. So what I want to do here is I want to create a connection for just the end date. So you see as I hover over here, the start date is just that one value there, 11, 14, 2016. I want to create a connection for just the end date now. So I can either click here and go to try and get data from table and range or I can make a copy of this particular query. I'm going to make a copy of this query. It makes it easier. Right click and duplicate. So I'm making a copy of this. And in this particular step, these steps we want, we want to keep these steps. But the last step we want, we don't need that step. We want to calculate the latest. So I'll delete that. And under transform, I'll go to date and click on latest. And that's the latest date, April 22, 2018. I'll call this one, I'll call this query end. And click home, close and load. So now I have two connections, one for the start date of 11, 14, 2016, one that references the last end date. Let me hover over this, 4, 22, 2018. So we have our 11, 14, 2016, control down arrow, 4, 22, 2018, control up arrow. So now with this, I can start to create a calendar table. So to create my calendar table, I'm going to create a new query. So now I'm going to create a new query, go to get data from other sources and blank query. And here we're going to start to enter some M code, just one line of M code. And M code is basically the language that is behind Power Query. So I'll type equal number dot from open. I forgot. Oops. Let me start this off with a open curly brackets. You know, need to start off with the open curly brackets. Now the open parentheses, we're going to use the value that's going to come out of, let me open this. We'll use the value that comes out from the start query. So we'll put start there. That is going to be that date. And then dot dot number dot from open parentheses, we're going to use the value that's coming out of that end query. So I'll type end. Got to make sure my syntax is correct. Close parentheses, close curly brackets, press enter. And you'll see what we have a list of serial numbers. Now this list of serial numbers is actually the way that Excel sees dates. This 42688 is that April number, right? the April year number. Close this. Let's minimize that. And I'm going to turn this into a table. Click on turn to a table. I'm going to accept the default here. Click OK. And turn this data type into a date. And now you see that the values are dates. I'll change this to date. All right? And I can close and load this. Let's load to a new worksheet. Table, new worksheet. And so we have our calendar table here from 1114, control down arrow, all the way to April 22, 2018. Now, the nice thing about this, let's open up my query here. Double click that, and we'll call it query one. Let's call this calendar. Now, the nice thing is that we can add additional columns that pull out the year or the month or the day of the week from this particular date column. So, I'll go into add column, and let's say we want to pull out the year. We'll pull out the year here. We have our year here. Click this again. Let's pull out the month. We don't want the month number. Let's have the name of the month. And we have November here. 
And maybe we'll pull out some other things, like we'll pull out the, um, let's see, what can we pull out? Oh, the day, uh, the name of the day, right? That's a Monday, 11, 14, 2016, that's a Monday. And if we click close and load, it pulls all that out for us. We don't have to, it. well, we don't have to manually adjust it, it's dynamic. And what I mean dynamic is, let's say, for example, this data goes all the way up to 2018. Maybe I have some additional data here. Control up arrow. Let me select this and add it to my file there. Control shift down. Control C to copy. Let's go back into data one here and go down one cell. Control V to paste. You know this table has expanded now. It's gone all the way up to uh, 1,001 rows. We have 525 rows loaded to the calendar. If I just click here to refresh, we're going to have over a thousand rows that are loaded now. And you notice that as I have my calendar here, it has updated, right? It's up, not only has it updated that date from April 2018 to November 12, 2019, it's also updated the year and the month name and the day name. So that's all kind of done automatically. Let me go back up here. So we don't really have to go through here and manually update this if we have uh, cells that we want to update for a new end date. Using Power Query, we can create a calendar table and if we add data to it later on, it automatically or automatically updates it for us. And we can use this to create a new calendar table. If we want to reference or do lookups, this adds a lot of automation and saves us a lot of time. So that's a way that you can create a dynamic calendar table with start and end dates using Power Query. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.